Alrighty guys, what's going on? If you saw the thumbnail, you kind of already know what it is. This is the Ducati Scrambler that I went and picked up uh, about two days ago. Not to be confused with that KTM RC390, which belongs to that guy over there, uh, who is uh, just happened to be here on LCR. What's your name, man? Drew. Drew? I was trying to tell the people at home that uh, this isn't the RC390 we have in the garage, just happens to be next to me while I'm filming this video. Weird coincidence, but in clean spec over here, good looking RC. But anyways, today this is the star of the show. We've got this beautiful desert sled hanging out here. Uh, we're going to take it on this road over here on LCR, Lime Creek Road here in Austin. Talk a little bit about why I got this bike. I think for a lot of you guys, you're a bit confused why I didn't buy... Uh, a Turbo Busa, uh, of course, that's what everyone's always concerned about. Why I don't have any more Turbo Busas? Why don't I get a Turbo Busa? Uh, why didn't I get a Street Triple 765, a 210, something like that? Um, but I'll explain why the Desert Sled makes all kinds of sense. So let's jump on the bike and let's talk about it. Ah, so now here we are on the Desert Sled. Oh, we got a guy doing a maneuver up here. Checking to see if he was all right. So, why this bike? Well, first of all, uh, it looks amazing. Let's talk about that. This bike looks absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm having such a good time on it because, um, I mean, as weird as it sounds, motorcycles are emotional purchases, right? Like, you don't get a bike simply because of the performance stats. You get it because the look, the sound, the feel, the perceived emotional value of it, right? No one picks up a bike just because uh, it makes 240 horsepower or whatever it is. But for a lot of people, uh, you know, sometimes playing those number games is the way to go. But, I mean, for me personally, for a street bike anyways, I don't really care about the performance figure. So, speaking of performance figure, let's go over the performance figures on this motorcycle. It features an 803cc air-cooled V-twin from Ducati itself. They've been using this engine for quite a while. And, uh, you know, it's as, even though it is a little bit old, it's not exactly the uh, newest kit on the block. I still think it's a pretty great engine. It's got loads of torque down low, makes about 49 foot-pounds of torque, and about 75, 76 horsepower or so, which is pretty healthy, honestly, all things considered. Um, the main reason why I chose this bike over any other bike uh, that I could have for my personal street bike is I didn't really want a thoroughbred sport bike for the street, honestly. I thought it just didn't make any sense to get something that, you know, could rip up twisty roads because I have a track bike for that, right? I have a track bike that's all about you know, carving up my lap times, going faster, trying to get better in a meaningful way. For me, a street bike is all about just having fun on a back road and enjoying the torque, enjoying the ride, and something that's a little more upright too. So a big selling point for me on the desert sled particularly is how upright this motorcycle is. Uh, that makes it really, really, really fun, uh, easy to flick around, that kind of thing. So I really, really enjoy it. I have to pay attention here a little bit. I haven't been on this road before. Well, I have been on it, just not enough to, you know, dive into corners and willy-nilly and talk about stuff at the same time. That's how you get chopped up. So you'll notice we're not going to be going any quicker. Also, I got this bike brand, brand new, so there's only about 296 miles on it. And uh, I don't, can't, uh, you know, redline it or anything like that. So we're going to be running a very mild pace here at Lime Creek Road, just enjoying the scenery, practicing our good throttle control powering out of corners when we need to, and just uh, enjoying the ride, Ducati lifestyle. <laughs> um, back in 2016, I rode a friend's Ducati Scrambler, and honest to God, I just could never get it out of my mind. I thought the bike was absolutely amazing. I loved the torque that it had. I loved the sound that it made. Um, Many of you know this, but the first bike I was kind of enamored with was a custom uh, Triumph T100 that I saw on the internet that led me to the Daytona that, of course, I still love sport bikes, so that kind of began my love for it. But um, honestly, I've, I have a real soft spot for the retro classic market. I think they're super cool. I think that these bikes make a lot of sense for street riding, and they're just really freaking sweet. I don't really know how else to put it, honestly. So. 
back in 2016, I rode the Scrambler, couldn't get it out of my mind, and then I saw that Ducati came out with this special edition of the Scrambler, I think it was two years ago, the first Desert Sleds. Uh, they sold it in that black retro paint scheme. God, I saw one I saw one photo of that thing, I never stopped thinking about it. And many of you who follow me on Instagram know that periodically, I would just kind of put up stuff about Scramblers, and I was like, man, that Desert Sled's looking real, real good, isn't it? And I was just like super stoked on that motorcycle. But, uh, you know, I couldn't, you know, I, unfortunately back then I wasn't really in the position to purchase a brand new bike. But nowadays I have the luxury to buy a motorcycle like this, which is pretty cool. Never really stopped thinking about the sled, honestly. Never stopped thinking about it. Um, what I really wanted to do with this bike is uh, a little very tight little corner here. What I wanted to do with this bike is just take it out on some back roads, enjoy it for a little weekend ride, something like that. Uh, I have the very, very privileged life to have five different motorcycles right now in my garage. So I kind of have my pick of the litter when it comes to what I want to ride for my personal motorcycle. But to be honest, the giveaway bikes, I didn't really want to put a ton of miles on them, you know? I really felt that if I was going to own a motorcycle, I'd want to put the miles on that instead of the giveaway bikes. Yeah, so a, a couple more specs on this motorcycle. Um, after this uh, quick little vlog section here, we're going to sit in the garage and talk about it some more and answer a couple questions from Instagram. But um, one of the things that I love about this bike too is it's really not a, a kind of show uh, dual sport motorcycle. It has proper off-road long travel suspension, a bigger front wheel, a dedicated swing arm for this particular style of scrambler. Uh, no other scrambler has a swing arm that this one has. It has uh, rider modes for your, um, like if you're doing off-road or regular on-road riding. It also comes with these uh, Pirelli Scorpions, I believe they're called, that were co-developed for this specific motorcycle. And I gotta say, this bike, even though like you can take it on light trails, which I've done a little bit of, which is a lot of fun, I have like very, very little off-roading experience, but the Scrambler just feels like you can just throw anything at it and you're gonna have a fun time with it. It's kind of nuts. It's like a do-anything motorcycle. Like right now, it's just carving up these twisties with very little effort. And I'm keeping a pretty good pace around here, man. Like I'm not, you know, going super slow or anything like that. I'm having a great time on this bike. It also just feels like if you do come across some gravel or some rough pavement, it's not really gonna care. And I took this bike out to a back road called Cow Creek Road. Uh, a little further north around here and it really just performs so admirably in mixed conditions i think that's really where the what the hell is that okay i think that's really where the bike shines is those kind of more mixed conditions as the name implies scrambler you know it's meant for <laughs> have some fun with it huh we can't rev it out to redline because we are breaking it in and we are following ducati's service intervals we have caught a car, so we will slow down a little bit. Um, but yeah, like crazy how I feel like it's a true dual sport motorcycle. Um, and the reason that I got this instead of, you know, I don't know, a DRZ 400 or like a Versus or any other kind of dual sport bike, I guess a Versus is more of a sport touring. I don't know, like instead of like an Africa Twin or something like that, this bike kind of fits in its own little category because it's not gigantic like an ADV bike, but it's also not tiny like the Scrambler. Like you, you sit on this versus a traditional Scrambler from Ducati and uh, you know, it feels a lot, lot bigger, but not like an ADV bike. So it's kind of in the middle. Um, honestly, riding this around town, it feels like a supermoto with the V-Twin. And I gotta say, it's a whole lot of fun. This motor's super torquey, makes a great sound. It's just an absolute blast. And I gotta say, like, I just, uh, I don't know, motorcycles are an emotional thing. And you should get the bike you feel attracted to. I don't know, you shouldn't think twice about it. You should just get the bike that, that you really feel attracted to and you really want because that's the one you're really going to enjoy and love, you know? Don't get a bike that on paper makes you, you know, kind of seem like you really want it or whatever. Uh, but anyways, that'll do for the vlog portion of today's video. 
Uh, now we're gonna turn it over to the garage answer a couple questions from Instagram and just do some detailed shots of the motorcycle as well. So I will see you guys there. And just like that, we are here in the garage. Uh, just came back from that little ride you guys saw in the vlog. Uh, so let's talk a little more about the Ducati Scrambler. Um, I thought it'd be really fun. I kind of went over why I bought it, uh, why I like the bike so much, why I felt so compelled to buy one. And I thought, it, I think what would really help solidify why I chose to buy this bike is to maybe do a couple detailed look arounds and just talk about it a little bit and then I will get to the questions you sent to me on Instagram but before we do I think the elephant in the room here as well is uh, why didn't I go with the Triumph Scrambler right or the Triumph Scrambler uh, XC or XE I don't know the, the the like naked ADV they have simply put guys the Triumph Scrambler uh, is not as snappy and is not as fun to ride as a Ducati it just isn't the Ducati's 803cc V-Twin versus the Parallel Twin found the Triumph. This just has more character, a little more feel, a little more fun. Um, and it's weird, because I'm a pretty diehard Triumph guy. I love almost all of their motorcycles, but I rode the Scrambler, I really didn't like it. And then I rode this, uh, this is like the third one that I've ridden, and they're really good bikes. They're really, really, really good bikes. So I just don't like the Triumph one. So I'm not super picky about brands, honestly. Like I'm, it's kind of funny that I'm now a, a Ducati owner because I really, to be honest, their sport bikes don't do much for me. But the Scrambler, I think, is like a whole separate thing, really. So let's get some detailed shots of the bike. Let's talk a little bit about it and then answer your questions on Instagram. So the first thing we have to discuss is this is a 2019 uh, Scrambler. So you'll notice a couple key changes over the other desert sled that they made. I'll pull up a photo here really quick of the 2018 uh, Ducati Scrambler desert sled. So you'll notice it had gold wheels, it had the black frame, uh, it was a little different, but this one now has the wire mesh wheels here in silver, and then they made the frame red. Um, there's a couple reasons why I went with the 2019. Um, not only did I get a pretty fantastic deal on this one, but also because there's a couple key changes on this one that just made it, you know, pretty unpassable for me, honestly. Um, I think the details on the bike are really, really cool. Um, as you can see here, this red frame looks really, really beautiful. I do love the fact that the piping is all exposed. It looks really cool. This is one of the best sounding stock exhausts I've also heard, although I will be putting a high pipe full exhaust system on it for sure. And as you'll notice at the front here, no radiator because this Ducati is air cooled. So as I mentioned in my video and the vlog, um, long travel, uh, desert sled specific suspension on this guy, a bigger front wheel, a swing arm specific to the desert sled as well. These knobbier tires, which are actually pretty unbelievable. I will say like, I'm having so much fun with this bike in trail conditions, in dry conditions. Um, the takeaway for me is this bike is fun in pretty much like every single environment um, at almost any speed, which is pretty hard to do. I think it's really hard to manufacture a bike that's awesome in any capacity, you know? Other things that I really, really enjoy, and you guys might think I'm a snob for this, but I just love that this seat has this red stitching on it. There's different materials here at the top versus here at the side. And then you have that Ducati logo sort of embossed into it. It makes it look really premium and really kind of sets it apart in the segment, in my opinion. The other thing you'll notice as well is this has full adjustable suspension uh, at the front and this unit here at the rear is preload only no adjustability in the rear as far as i can tell um maybe up here no i don't know if it's adjustable in the rear but i can check on that so far i think the bike setup from factory is pretty good i haven't really had a need to change it at all so we'll be uh you know riding it as is for a little bit the other thing as well is Brembo front brakes up at the front, single-sided, but you don't really feel it needs anything else, honestly. Um, I don't really feel the need to have a stronger brake system on this bike. Dual discs are cool and they definitely help, but the rider is honestly much more in control of the brakes than you realize, and you have more braking potential than you realize. Um, so pretty stoked on that. But now let's, uh, let's turn it on so you can see the uh, daylight running LEDs and a couple of the other features. I'm not gonna turn the bike on because it's here in the garage and I don't want the fumes to get all caught up in my throat, but we'll do that really quick and then we'll answer your questions 
from Instagram. All right guys, so we'll check out one of the big reasons why you'd want the 2019 Scrambler versus the uh, 2018. And that is daytime running LEDs. This is a big selling point for me, honestly. I know I'm a little vain perhaps, but I do love the way that these DRLs look on the Ducati. Uh, the dash is actually really intuitive. Um, it's really quite small, which I like. It gives you more of a pure kind of experience when you're on this bike, which I think is really cool. Um, you can cycle through a couple different things here. Uh, let's see. See so here in settings, you have different riding modes. You have a pin code, you have a lock or clock rather, can't read. You have your date settings, the service, the backlit of it, DRLs, the battery, units obviously, turn indicator, speed maybe? I don't know, RPMs, and that's about it. But I think it's really cool to actually put a little bit of electronics into this bike uh, because the other models of it um, don't actually have riding modes. The Desert Sled is the only scrambler with a riding mode. You get an off-road mode, which uh, lightly disables the ABS in the rear, I believe, or just like completely disables in the rear, so you can get that rear slide around a little bit. Um, and you have journey mode, which is, I guess, just normal on-road riding. Some of the branding that Ducati does for the scrambler is a little cringy, but it's such a good bike. Uh, like this, for example, right here on the gas tank, you can see it says, uh, born free. 1962 so some of that stuff's a little weird but uh, overall this is an amazing motorcycle and i'm very stoked to own it the high fenders really give it a supermoto kind of flair to it um honestly when you ride this bike around town it really just feels like a supermoto which is all right in my book um i absolutely love that i really like the rear light as well it's this little round unit right there and then of course the turn signals LEDs as well, which give it a really pulled together look. But without further ado, let's answer y'all's Instagram questions. Now, the funny thing is I don't have a seat, so I'm gonna have to sit on this trash can uh, next to my brand new Ducati. So the metaphor is not lost on me, by the way. Let's find my phone, where did I put that thing? So I put up on Instagram a quick story. Uh, here, I'll show you guys what that story looks like looks like that. Uh, I was just asking you what y'all wanted to see about it, questions y'all had on the sled, as I call it lovingly. Uh, so yeah, let's check these out. Okay, so this person, uh, Kayling Loran too says, hey, could you go down the highway for a bit and be okay? Uh, you can actually, I mean, if, you're, if you've ridden a naked bike on the highway, this bike is exactly like that. You get a lot of chest buffeting, but that's part of the fun in my opinion. You don't really want to go faster than 85 miles per hour or so with this bike. And I think that's a great thing. You really don't need to be going faster than 85, 90, like ever really, you shouldn't be anyways. And so this bike does a great job of up to those speeds type of thing, but it's not a bike that I would personally go like 120 with or something like that. Uh, Philippe Samo asks, too tall for a short guy? Yes, uh, I can just about flat foot this bike and I am six foot and have a 32 inch inseam. So I think if you're in that, like 5'4 to 5'8 range, you're gonna have a really hard time with this bike. It's probably gonna be a little uncomfortable. And I think if you're anything under like 5'4, you probably can't ride this bike. It's really tall, really, really tall. This person says, is the Desert Sled a viable starter bike if you're used to dirt bikes off-road or am I crazy? I think it is, because it's a torquey bike. It's really similar to the FC07 in terms of power. I think it almost makes exactly the same amount of power. Um, a little more torque though. But I think the size of it is what's really going to turn you off unless you're used to riding 450s and that kind of stuff. But the size of this thing might make, make you a little bit hesitant, but I think it's okay. This guy says, we got to get a sound check, Papa Yam. Uh, I did that in the vlog, I think. I don't remember. This person says, will it actually sled though? Uh, no, I don't think so. Do 180 degree turn in the dirt. I'm going to try. I got to learn that. New or used, either way, how much? This bike was brand new and it was about 13.5 out the door. Any plans for a tail tidy? Uh, yes, definitely want to do a tail tidy on this bike. Uh, this person says, the look of the bike confused me a lot. Um, I, th I thought that was really funny. Quite a few people, I showed this bike to like friends and family who don't ride and they're like, is it a cafe bike? Is it a dirt bike, like no one really knows what to make of it. And I think that's great. I, I don't like having a bike that people like immediately know what it is and be like, bro, sick ninja, dude, sick ninja, bro. I like having a bike that like, if you're a rider, you get it. And if you're not, whatever, you know? 
This person asked, really didn't think your next bike would be a scrambler, so why one? Uh, I think I explained this in my vlog, but it's just a fantastic motorcycle. Uh, at literally any speeds and in any terrain, this bike is fun to ride. And that's a really hard thing to find. Either a bike is really fun when you're going fast, or it's really fun when you're going slow and kind of loses out in the top end. Like, this bike just does everything so well. And I just, I don't know, like I ride it and I just have so much fun. It's like an invigorating, like pure motorcycling experience for me. And it's really fun taking this thing out and being like, hmm, any road is open to me. You know what I mean? This person asks, is the braking significantly worse with one rotor? It's not. I think the braking feel on this bike is actually pretty solid because it's a big old Brembo unit. So you're not missing out on any braking feel. Let's see, aftermarket support and crash bars. Are you okay with low siding this on a trail? Yeah, it's a, it's a motorcycle, dude. Like at the end of the day, uh, this bike is meant to be used and abused and that's what I'm gonna use it for. I'm definitely gonna put some crash protection on it. I definitely want a high pipe exhaust. It comes with a skid plate, so that's already nice. Uh, definitely put some crash end bars right here, little things right there, maybe take these off. Um, but yeah, I, I fully intend on using this bike for its intended purpose. I'm not gonna, you know, keep in the garage. With the custom elongated swing arm, do you feel the potential to pull dank nooners? Uh, I really do. Um, I'm still breaking this bike in, so I haven't really romped on it yet. I'm keeping it under 6,000 RPM until 600 miles, as the service manual says. Uh, but yeah, I really feel like this bike can wheelie really, really nicely. I can't do wheelies that great, but I do feel the potential from it as you ride it. It just kind of wants to lift a little bit when you get on a little bit. This person asks, are you going to get a Leo Vince exhaust for it? Uh, probably, Leo Vince is one of our partners for the channel and we can probably hook it up with one of the exhausts for this bike, but I wanna see about high pipe options if they have it. If they, if they don't have the high pipe, I might go Acra or Termignoni or something like that. <laughs> this person says, do you feel like a true Ducatista now and did it come with biscottis? I love how the biscotti Ducati thing that I came up with has become just like a, a true meme, but I really don't feel like a Ducatista with this motorcycle. And I know for a fact that internally Ducati uh, and the Scrambler brand are really separate. I remember at EICMA in Milan, uh, the, the Scrambler booth is in one section and Ducati Corsa and the Super Sports and all their other bikes are in a totally separate section. They, they're kind of very separate. Um, I think a lot of folks, if they don't see the little Ducati logo right here, they don't even know it's a Ducati, honestly, which I really like. I don't want a bike that people look at it and they're like, oh my God, it's a Ducati. It's so expensive and it's crazy and this and that. Like a Panigale is gonna get you that everywhere you go. But this bike, because it just looks like a weird retro dirt bike, um, no one's gonna think that. And when you're on it, you don't really get the impression that it's a Ducati other than that sweet V-twin sound. But I really don't feel like a Ducatista, man. I also feel like Ducatistas don't, uh, except me, maybe. So this person says, did you consider a Triumph Scrambler in comparison to Desert Sled? I did not because I don't like that bike, so didn't do it. Person says, off-road review slash ground clearance, speak about that wonderful engine. Yeah, the engine on the Desert Sled is really quite nice. Uh, it's got plenty of torque, plenty of low end grunt, and this particular model has the long travel suspension, so plenty of fun can be had, really good ground clearance, um, way more off-road capable than I'm capable of doing anything with. I've taken it on some really light trails just to kind of explore and start having some fun with it, um, and I really like it. Those tires on the road, how's the traction, this person asks. Actually, amazing. The, the, the traction that these tires have on road is incredible. Like this bike down a fun, twisty road, is just as capable as any sport bike. You can really just flick it in and it just holds a line. I don't know how it does it, but it just does. This bike is fantastic down a twisty road and really good when the going gets rough. So there's like no compromises to it. It's really amazing. Uh, this person asks, you sticking to cross tires or putting on some road specific one? No, I think I'm just gonna keep putting on these kinds of tires on this bike. Um, I really don't feel it's limited at all with these tires. So I'm gonna keep these on there because it's pretty sweet. This person says, why that particular Ducati? You could have gotten a cooler looking one. Hey, I think this bike is super cool looking. Literally every time I get off this bike, I look back on it and I'm just like, oh my God, that's such a cool, I love the way this bike looks, love it. it says, why the desert sled package and not just the reg, this person says, why the desert sled package and not just the regular one? Already kind of went through that. Uh, this person asks, cost out the door, how many cc? How's the power delivery? So 13.5 out the door, again, uh, the cc is 803 cc's, and the power delivery is very nice. It's nice and smooth and linear. Uh, I haven't really explored the top end of it yet because we're breaking it in, so yeah. 
Sirson says, how does the drive compare to your old FC09? Completely differently. The FC09 is just this sporty torque monster that feels kind of like a, I think the FC09 competes more with like the hyper motard kind of bikes. It's definitely just like this weird upright crazy street bike, but this is like a proper like borderline ADV bike type of thing. So really different. So a lot of people asking what made me pick the Scrambler. Uh, I've already kind of walked through that. And we'll end on this one. It says, don't really have anything to ask. I just want to say I'm really thankful for your vids. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks so much for watching. We'll wrap it up with this episode. Uh, we're going to be doing weekly episodes with the Scrambler because I'm super stoked on this bike. Uh, it's so different for me to actually have a personal motorcycle again uh, rather than the giveaway bikes. Because the giveaway bikes, I always felt bad riding them around. I was like, these bikes are going to be given away. I can't really do what I want to do. And like the mods we were doing to them were like, you know, uh, powered by Patreon and, you know, voted on. This is just like, for me and it feels really different like when I'm riding it around late at night or around town uh, it, it feels I, I get that real like pride of ownership about it which is really fun uh, but yeah every Sunday we'll be having episodes with the scrambler I will probably be doing videos like this just kind of like posting up a Q&A like talking about something just riding the scrambler around maybe showing you guys some trails here and there uh, nothing too crazy with it uh, Sunday is going to be kind of reserved for like either scrambler footage or Daytona track footage something like that so uh, pretty fun. Uh, I feel crazy fortunate to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, it's all thanks to you guys. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, tune in tomorrow or the day after because starting this Sunday, we'll be doing pretty much daily uploads. So that's pretty crazy. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later.